Hey guys, welcome back to the Kubernetes series. So far we have accessed everything from our Kubernetes cluster without any restrictions. But in real time, we will have multiple nodes, namespaces, deployments, replica sets, pods, services and many other Kubernetes resources. Also we will be having many users accessing these cluster resources. When we don't have any restrictions to the cluster, there may be chances of deleting these resources accidentally. So it's wise to impose restrictions to create, modify and delete resources based on some role. For example, we should ensure that developers can only deploy certain applications to a given namespace or our infrastructure management teams can have only read access for monitoring tasks and admin can do everything. In this chapter, we will be learning how to restrict access to Kubernetes resources using the RBAC framework with complete hands-on. So without any further delay, let's get started. In general, to access any resource, be it Kubernetes resource, REST API, AWS service or any other service, first we should prove that we are a valid user by giving our credentials. This process is called authentication. If we are not having access to the requested resource, we will be thrown out with the 401 error. And if we are a valid user, we will get 200 response. When we prove our authenticity by giving our credentials, it doesn't mean that we can access everything. There are multiple things we can do in the application like creating a resource, updating a resource or deleting a resource. We must be authorized to perform a specific action. So before accessing any resource and after authentication, we will be checked against our role to see if we are authorized to perform the requested action or not. This process is called authorization. If we are not authorized to perform the requested action, again we will be thrown out with a 403 error and if we are authorized, we will be able to complete the requested action. So in summary, with authentication, we prove that we are a valid user and with authorization, we will be checked if we can perform a specific task. There are different models with which we can achieve this authorization like role-based access control, attribute-based access control, node authorization, etc. However, the popular authorization model is role-based access control which determines whether a certain user is allowed to perform a certain action on a given resource based on his role. Based on roles, the amount of access can vary. Like if you are a developer, you can create, read and update resources and if you are from monitoring team, you can only read the resources and if you are an admin, you can do everything. So to start understanding how role based access control works, first we need a user. In Kubernetes, we cannot create users like we created pods, services, etc. Because Kubernetes doesn't manage users and should be managed by external identity platforms like Keycloak, AWS IAM, etc. However, authentication and authorization are handled by Kubernetes. When we perform any operation against our cluster, the request goes to the API server. API server first authenticates if you are a valid user or not. If you are a valid user, then it authorizes if we are allowed to perform that action. If we are authorized, then we will get our result. Let us start our hands-on by creating a user. When we start the minikube cluster, the information related to the cluster is stored in the cube config file. Let's open this in the VS code. So here we have list of clusters that we have access to. And this is our minikube cluster information. We can have any number of clusters that we can connect to, be it minikube, AWS EKS or Azure AKS, etc. And also we have multiple users here. When we start the minikube cluster, automatically minikube user gets created with which so far we have accessed everything. And these are the contexts. A context contains Kubernetes cluster and the user and the default names. And this is the certificate authority. Any user that provides a valid certificate signed by this certificate authority is considered authenticated. So to authenticate against our minikube, let's generate a certificate and sign that certificate with this certificate authority. So first we should generate the user's private key with open SSL. Here I am storing the output file to the current folder. Enter. As you can see, we have the private key generated. 
Next, we must create a certificate signing request for the user with the above key. So, this is the command to generate certificate signing request. Here, we are providing the private key that we generated in the previous step. And this CN stands for common name, which acts like the username, and this O acts like the group name. We can give multiple groups to the current user. So, now Pavan user belongs to dev and example.org groups and we are storing this certificate signing request to the current folder. Enter. Cool. Now the private key and the certificate signing request are ready. We can verify that with ls grep pavan. As you can see, we have certificate signing request and private key files in the current folder. Now this certificate signing request must be signed by the certificate authority. We can get the certificate authority details from cube config file. So this is the certificate authority. So to sign it, we should generate this command. So here, this is the certificate authority that we copied from here. And this is the certificate authority key details. And this is the certificate signing request that we generated. And the generated certificate, we are storing it to the current folder. Enter. As you can see, the permission is denied. Let's try the same command with sudo. If it prompts for password, please enter your password. Enter. Cool. Now the certificate is generated. Next, we should add the user to the cluster with kubectl config set credentials. So this is the username and this is the certificate that we just generated and this is the private key. Enter. As you can see, the pavan user is set. We can verify that in kube config file. If we go back to the user section, we have the new user added pavan. And now we should create the context with same kubectl config command. Here, instead of set credentials, we use the set context command. And this is the context name that I'm giving pavan minikube in the cluster, minikube cluster for the user pavan. And the default namespace also we can give with hyphen hyphen namespace is equal to default. So that means the default namespace will be default here. Enter. As you can see, the context is added. Same thing we can verify in the cube config file by going to the context section. As you can see, we have the new context added for the Pavan user. We can also verify that with kubectl config get context. So here, these are the two contexts we have. The star indicates we are working with minikube context, which was created by default. To use our newly created context, we should switch the context just like we switch the database when we are working with the databases. So to switch the context, kubectl config use context and the context name pavan hyphen minikube. Now the context is switched. We can verify that with kubectl config get context. As you can see, this is the current context. So now Whatever the request that we send it with kubectl, those requests goes on behalf of pavan user instead of minikube user. So now let's try to list down the pods, kubectl get pods. Boom! As you can see, this pavan user is forbidden to list down the pods. Why? Because we just created the user. By default, he doesn't have any permissions to access our cluster resources. It was just a skeleton user. That means he is a valid user but not authorized to perform anything. As an administrator, we should give him certain permissions. So let's switch back to the minikube user who is having access to everything and then we'll try to give some permissions to this pavan user. So to switch back to the minikube user, we can use the same use context and enter. Now we switch to minikube context. Now we should try to give permissions to the pavan user. In Kubernetes, we can give the permissions to a user with roles and role bindings. This is the simple role manifest file. Here, the API group identifies which API groups to target. This is necessary because different API groups can have the same resources. You can compare this with the packages in Java. A package can have multiple classes and different packages can have a class with the same name. And this is the list. And the empty string represents the core Kubernetes API. And this is the verbs which represents what kind of actions we can perform on these resources. To see what kind of verbs we can give for a particular user, we can go back to the terminal and we can run kubectl api 
resources hyphen o white grip pod so for the pods we can give all these kind of verbs so let's try to give some of the verbs in this role so we gave get watch and list that means anyone having this role can get the pods and watch the pod changes and also you can list down the pods so let's apply this manifest kubectl apply iphone f role dot yaml as you can see the role is created we can verify that with kubectl get roles as you can see the role pod reader is created so now we have both user and a role ready now we should connect these both so that the user will be having these permissions and this can be done with role binding in role binding we connect both subject and role this subject can be a user or user group or even a service account and in the role we defined what we can access and what we cannot access when we attach the subject and role with role binding we are attaching the permissions to the user with this we are giving permissions to pavan user to read pods here we have the role binding and here we are giving the user pavan that we created and this is the api group of the user you can get it with the kubectl api resources and here for this user we are attaching this role that we just created so basically a role binding is nothing but connecting a user to a role so let's apply this kubectl apply ifnf role binding dot yaml so the role binding is created so now let's switch back to the pavan user and try to list on the pod kubectl get pods as you can see now we are able to list down the pods because we attached the pod reader role to the pavan user now let's try to create a pod and see what happens as you can see he is forbidden to create the pod because here we gave only get watch list permissions to the pavan not the create permissions now let's switch back to the mini cube user and create a namespace kubectl create namespace and namespace name now the namespace is created and in this namespace we'll create a new pod hyphen n test now the same pod is created in the test namespace also we can verify that with kubectl get pods and n test now let's switch back to the pavan user and try to access this pod in the test namespace so let's switch back to the pavan context and and try to list on the pod hmm you see here we got the same forbidden error this is because role and role binding are name spaced meaning the user will be having the permissions only for the name space where role binding is defined if we try to access the resources in another name space he will get an error so previously we defined the role binding in the default name space but we are trying to access the resources from the test namespace in which we didn't create the role binding so when we have multiple namespaces defining role binding in every namespace is a tedious process and the few resources like persistent volumes are not even namespaced for which we cannot add role binding so there must be a way to define roles and role bindings at the cluster level instead of namespace level that's where cluster role and cluster role binding comes into the picture the only difference between role binding and cluster role binding is that role binding is name spaced meaning only where role binding is defined that permissions are valid whereas cluster role binding is at the cluster level that means we can access the resources in any name space as you can see cluster role is similar to the role where we define the verbs and resources but this is at the cluster level and the same way where we attached a role with the user we have to attach this cluster role with the user for that we have the cluster role binding where we reference the cluster role and the user so now let's apply this both kubectl apply iphone f cluster role dot yaml hmm the error is because we are using the pavan mini cube context for which creating cluster role resource is not possible so let's switch back to the mini cube context and now let's try to apply the same the cluster role is created and the cluster role binding is also created so now let's switch back to the pavan context and try to get the pods from the test name space cool as you can see we are able to list down the pods from different name space also 
not only from this namespace, we can get the pods from all the namespaces too because we define the cluster role binding for the Pavan user. Awesome! Now we know how to give access to this user left and right. But how to handle hundreds of users in the cluster? Should we give the same permissions to all users by giving in this array? Again, it's a tedious process. That's where groups come into the picture. Group is nothing but the group of users. Instead of defining each user separately, we assign a user to the group and here we give the group instead of giving the user. So group and the group name is dev. You remember when we created this user, we gave the dev group for this Pavan user. Save it and apply the cluster role binding. Apply the cluster role binding. It's updated. As a homework, you can create multiple users and attach those users to the same group and see if they are able to access the resources or not. Perfect! We have seen how a physical user like you and me can access Kubernetes resources. But what if my Spring Boot or Python application wants to access the same resources? Can we give our credentials in the application? No, that's not safe. For the same, we have service accounts. Service accounts are special types of users. You can call them as application users. When a namespace gets created, the default service account is created in every namespace. Pods where our application runs use these default service accounts to authenticate themselves with the API server. And if we don't explicitly mention what service account to use, all pods will use this default service account. We can also create the custom service account in these namespaces. So we can get the service accounts with kubectl, get sa, sa is the short name for the service account. As you can see, the default service account is there in this default namespace. We can also find this default service account in the test namespace. And we can create a service account with kubectl, create service account and service account name. As you can see, the new service account is created in the default namespace. Now let's create a simple kubectl pod and try to get the list of pods from this pod. So let's go back to the terminal and create the pod with kubectl. Apply f kubectl pod.yaml. The pod is created. Now let's get into this pod. Now we are in the pod. Let's try to list down the pods. kubectl get pods. Hmm, there's an error with the reason forbidden. This is because this pod is trying to use the default service account for which listing pod access is not there. So instead of default service account, let's try to use the test service account for this pod. So let's exit. And to use the custom service account in a pod, all we need to define is the service account attribute in the pod definition. So here we are using the test service account now. So let's delete the pod and create it again. Now the pod is created. Now let's get into the pod and try to list on the pods. kubectl get pods. Now also there is the same error but this time this is using the test-sa service account in the default namespace. We created this service account but we didn't attach any roles to this service account. So let's add the permissions to this service account. Let's go to the role binding and add the service account here. Save it and apply the manifest. Let's open the new tab, kubectl apply f and f, role binding .yaml. As you can see, the role binding is updated. Now let's go back to the previous tab and try to list on the pods. As you can see, now we are able to list on the pods with this service account. So pods uses the service accounts to access the Kubernetes resources. Let's come out of this and try to see if I can perform an action with a command. So example kubectl auth can I create pods? As you can see, it is saying that yes, that means we are able to create the pods because we are in the minikube context. And we can test if a service account is having permission or not with iPhone iPhone as. This is to impersonate the service account. And here we give the system colon service account in the namespace default and the service account name is test iphone sa here we got the response no that means we cannot create pods with this service account let's try to see if we can get the pods as you can see we can get the pods with this service account so 
if you want a real quick check if a user or a service account is having a permission or not you can use this auth can i that's it for this section so we have seen how to create a user group and service accounts also we have seen how to attach specific permissions to this user group service account i hope you found it helpful my name is pawan iltapu and i thank you very much for watching this video if you liked it please share it with your friends and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any updates